Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, today we will talk about rainbows. Well, strictly speaking, it's dispersion um, when the light goes through a sphere. Um, but yes, it's about rainbow. Now, this particular lecture is part of the course Physics for Teens presented on Unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from the website because it's part of the course. So the website has a menu, all the lectures are logically connected, um, and uh, every lecture has notes, very detailed notes with pictures, so it's basically like a textbook which is divided into um, uh, parts and each part belongs to one particular lecture so you have a video and textual presentation of the same material um, the website has exams uh, you can take it any number of times you want it just for yourself basically um, everything is free and uh, there are no advertising so it's just pure knowledge also the website contains prerequisite course ma uh, math for teens mathematics is a mandatory knowledge which you have to possess before um, doing the real physics. Okay, so back to rainbows. Everybody knows what rainbow is. Um, everybody probably saw it above um, the waterfalls, for instance, or after the rain. Um, just recently, I I, I I saw the rainbow above the Victoria Falls in Africa. Very beautiful. Now, rainbows have this circular shape and they have different colors, obviously, and we will talk about today about why actually it happens. Well, the short uh, answer is a refraction, but now let's just go into the details of this refraction. Yes, one more thing. Um, there are actually a few um, kind of geometrical composition between Sun, uh, observer, and the uh, water droplets which are in the air um, after the rain or above the waterfalls. Now this composition can be different, this geometry, and obviously different geometries have different results, some of them just don't have, don't uh, form any rainbows, um, some do, and uh, it basically, again, depends on how it's all arranged. Now, I will address first a simpler form, which basically very rarely occurring. Simpler form is when you have the sun, you have um, some kind of water droplet here, and observer somewhere here. Now this is a simpler and why it actually very rarely really seen? Well, because sun is very bright and the rainbow is formed somewhere in this area where the droplets are and uh, in this particular case when the sun is very bright you don't really see much. Another configuration where you usually see is something like this. Now the difference is that the light should go through a more complicated path in this particular case. So let me start from the simple one and then we will go to a more complicated. So the simple one is here. Now this is the sun and let me just enlarge this particular droplet of water. It would be easier for me to draw. Now, from sun, the light goes in, we can consider uh, that the light goes in parallel white light rays. So, the parallel ones goes as this. This is white uh, light rays from sun. Now, what happens in this particular case? Well, if you have the water droplet and you have some ray of light coming on its surface, 
there are basically two things which happen. One thing is reflection of the surface of the water. Another is when it penetrates um, through the water, but on the border between air and water, the white light uh, diffracts into different uh, components because different wavelengths have different um, refractive uh, index. Water has different refractive index for different um, components. And since white light is a combination of all the wavelengths from two, the whole spectrum, then this spectrum actually is opening up. And now, uh, how can I really draw it? First, I have to have um, the perpendicular to a surface. Perpendicular to a surface of the sphere is obviously the radius. So this is my angle of incident and angle of refraction is again different for different colors. Um, now the red light will have a smaller uh, deviation from the original uh, and correspondingly bigger Um, refraction uh, refraction uh, angle. The um, violet, so we will use just two opposite, uh, red and violet, everything, everything else is in between, R um, green, blue, etc. So the, so this would be my red light. So it's a little bit deviated. If this is my continuation of the white light, let me make it with interruptions. It's deviated. Now violet would be deviated more. That would be violet. Okay. Now, so the beta is, uh, as I was saying, uh, uh, a refraction uh, angle. And obviously we have the law of refraction sine A times N air in this particular case, because we're coming from air, is equal to sine of beta times uh, refractive index of water. So this is more or less uh, unit one. And for water, this is again different for different um, colors, but it's somewhere around 1.33. For one color it's less, another color is greater. Average is for yellow light is 1.33, considering. Um, okay, now let's just, in this particular case, forget about reflection, because reflection can occur here and it can occur here as well. But right now we're talking about a simple case when there is no reflection, everything goes through. So right now we have another um, refraction because the, air, uh, the uh, light comes from um, the water to the air. Okay, so let's again put perpendicular radiuses. Okay, so this is my now this is my incident angle, beta prime, for, right, uh, for red. I, I didn't really put it uh, for the violent because the picture would be too complicated. So we're talking about red light only. So we will have this incident angle and uh, the uh, refraction would be deviated from this particular um, uh, original angle, so it will be somewhere here. I can put it solid. So it goes, well, let's put observer here. This is my eye of an observer, and it goes to the eye of the observer. 
Now violet obviously will go somewhere here. Okay. Well, did, uh, am I right with this thing? I think I should really put it a little bit less inclined into this. I would probably have to put it right here. Something like this. And like here. And the eye would be here. Now, this is gamma. Uh, this is a refraction after the light, and now we can say that sine of uh, beta prime times n water is equal to sine of gamma and air. Again, this is about 1, this is about 1.33, so in this particular case gamma is greater than beta prime. Uh, right? Yes. And in this case, beta is less than uh, alpha. But now, look at this very important thing. Beta and beta prime are equal to each other. Why? Because these are two radiuses, right? So it's an equilateral triangle. And therefore, this is equal to this, which means these two are equal, which means alpha equals to gamma. Well, it's just an observation, not that it's very important. But actually, yes, the incident angle of the right, uh, of, of the uh, white uh, light ray which is coming onto a sphere would be equal to a refraction index as the light goes out. So that's basically what it is. Um, now, here is what's important. If I see the red light here, will I see the violet which comes from the same ray of sunlight? No, because they are going into different directions. And if I see red, I cannot see from the same, I uh, from the same uh, water droplet. I cannot see the violet as well. But there is a next um, water droplet, from which either on the left or on the right, uh, from which the violet will actually come to me. So again, if on the smaller scale, I have somehow light from one droplet and from another droplet a different which basically diffracts slightly differently I will have so if this is red this is violet so I have red and violet in two different places because how I see I see my um, red my, my red light on the continuation of this thing right so it's somewhere here now if my neighboring uh, water droplet sends me the violet in such a way that it actually goes from from there then I will see the violet here so red would be and, and violet and everything in between obviously so I will see different colors in different places and that's why we see basically different places for the colors in, in the rainbow they are not mixing together because if I see the violet from the same droplet, they would mix together again and make the white light for me. But that's not the case. The case is that red from one dro droplet comes to my eye. But into the same eye, the violet would come from another droplet because there is a slight difference. And here we have a difference in angles. So I cannot see it at the same time two of them. But if I have uh, somewhere here, I don't know, another droplet which goes with the same direction and hits the eye, then I will see the violet in the different places. So basically my point was that since the light is basically split into 
I don't know, it, it's like a one cone and then even wider cone. I will not see the same, uh, I, will not, I will not see different colors from the same uh, array of light. I will see red from one and violet from another because the result of this one, again, somehow I don't want to draw it, it will hit my eye or in this case. Okay, so this is about how the water actually is reflect what a droplet is reflecting light and it goes uh, into my eye but as i was saying it's almost impossible to see the um, the rainbow when the water droplet in between sun and you too bright sun sun is too bright so let's just draw another picture another picture would be a little bit more complicated but nevertheless it's more practical so now we have something like let's say we have sun here and the water droplet here now what happens is sun ray goes this way okay Now, let's talk about one particular color, let's say red. So, um, in this case, we will have um, this situation. Well, I should really put it this way. It should be some kind of... Okay, this is a white. And this is red. So, the first um, things which should happen, it should go inside the water. Because if it just reflected here, it will still be white. So, it's not interesting. We are not interested in this reflection. So, as I was saying, there is always part of the light is reflected, part of the light is going through and uh, deviates from the original direction. Now, here, observer is somewhere here. So, we don't see anything very bright over there. So, we see the colors. <coughs> now, here we have actually a reflection. So, it goes this way. And now, again, partially we have probably a reflection. goes back into the water droplet and can again reflect, refract, it, etc. But let's just forget about this. Now let's talk about that it goes through. It goes through, and this is my perpendicular, and it goes uh, somewhere here. So this is my eye. Now, this is the red. Now, the violet would be, well, kind of neighboring, but again, it would be at certain angle in such a way that it does not go into the same eye. So the same white uh, ray will produce only the red component which goes to me. It's a different white ray somewhere in neighborhood going against either the same or another um, most likely another rainbow um, uh, water drop. It will be again partially reflected, partially refracted and it will go into the same eye but it would appear to be now this, in this case I see red light appearing somewhere here. This is my red light. Now the same um, uh, the violet will be reflected and refracted from another droplet which would be somewhere here, and I will see it eventually in this direction. So this is more practical, uh, though a little bit more complicated path of the light. Partially refracted, partially reflected. And again, as I was saying, I can actually have a partial reflection here as well, and it goes this way, and maybe another reflection, 
again maybe somewhere uh, I will see it but it will be in a different in a different place so I will have more than one rainbow which is again sometimes you have double rainbow um, which means that the lights uh, partially reflected reflected refracted once and then if you have a second to then direction would be different obviously it will still go into the in, into your eye from some droplet but again the red will appear in still another uh, case so one red light you will see as single um, reflect reflection from inside the water droplet but if you have a double reflection, some other droplet will produce from the double reflection red light and you will see it in another place. So this is very important. Um, <coughs> it explains actually why you can see uh, double rainbow, uh, rainbow concentric to each other. We will talk about why it's concentric too. Okay, what else? I think that basically explains why you have different colors in different places on the sky. So now obviously you understand there is nothing material except the water droplets in the sky and what you see as red or white light is a result of partial reflection, partial refraction of the sunlight um, from the water droplets. Now, let's see now why do we have this circular shape of the, um, of the rainbow. Uh, okay. This is slightly different picture. And again, let me start from a simpler case. Whenever you have... This is the sun. And um, this is observer. Now, obviously we need certain angle at which I see um, after the refraction, refraction, whatever I see, this is direction where I, I'm getting the red light from some, some droplet. Now, where are different droplets of water which are in exactly the same position relative to parallel ray of lights and an observer which give me exactly the same angle well the, the, this is a sphere right so but my point is that if you will have a circle of the same circle of certain radius now this is basically a cone, if you wish. Now all these droplets which are here on this circle, they all, relatively to the observer, are in exactly the same position. Because the parallel lights up from the sun comes down, all of them have the same angle Rel so this angle between my um, vertical, well, we consider sun is uh, on, on the top, so between the vertical and every point on this circle, this angle is exactly the same. So whatever happens here with this particular water droplet happens here, and if the light from here comes here, then the light from here also comes here and from there comes because they're all little spheres and they are absolutely symmetrical relative to this they're circularly symmetrical relatively to the axis to the vertical axis so it's very important to understand that every one of these uh, water droplets is in exactly the same position relative to sun and observer as any other they're, they're all equivalent, which means if I see the red light from here, I see the red light from here. So all the red, uh, all the places 
in the space, in the three-dimensional space, where all the droplets produce the same red light, or green or violet, doesn't really matter which color, which comes to my eye. They are all on this giant circle. Where, w with this angle being whatever, like 40 degree, 42 degree, doesn't really matter, but some kind of a r relatively narrow range of, of degrees. So these are all red. Now, we were talking that the, let's say, violet I should really have from a neighboring, let's say from here. So this is red, and violet I will get from this um, water droplet. But again, if I see from this, I'm seeing from the same kind of circle of the same, of, of, of certain radius equal to the same um, uh, value as this one, and I will see all these droplets which are in the second circle, concentric obviously to the first, because it's all symmetrical relatively to the axis. So all these droplets are in exactly the same position as this one, which means that all these droplets, which from perspective of uh, observer, are um, producing the violet light are on the concentric uh, circle. So my point is that all the uh, water droplets which are on a circle um, which is in the plane perpendicular to that direction to the sun and on the same obviously radius, it's, it's a circle, with a center on the, on, the, on the axis of symmetry, they all produce the same light, the same color of light. So that's why we see um, reds, that's why we see violets, that's why we see whatever else, green, uh, in, in certain order, the order obviously depends on the wavelengths. So from red to orange to whatever, I don't remember, yellow, green, uh, blue, etc. Okay, but why do we see only half a circle, and not even half, sometimes, even a quarter? Uh, well, that's very simple, actually. It's all depend it all depends on the position between us and the sun. So, if we stand on the ground, this is the ground, this is observer, and sun is somewhere here. Now, these circles which I'm talking about, these are circles of water droplets. So, first of all, there must, mu must be water droplets somewhere. They may be here, or they may be here. But in any case, if I see, mm, the, the, if I see a circle which is perpendicular to this direction between sun and observer, then the circle would be like this. But I'm on the ground, so I cannot see this piece, obviously, right? So that's why I see only this piece. And it all depends on the direction to sun. Again, these uh, droplets which produce the same color are on a circle, which is in the plane perpendicular to this direction and the center lying on this line. So that's why from the Earth we see only uh, uh, maximum which we can see is half. But what if the cloud is not there? Well, then you don't see this, and you don't see this, you might see actually one piece and another piece. Now if, it's, uh, if the cloud of uh, droplets is here, then again it would be something like this circle and we will see we will see this piece of of rainbow right now there are some pictures of um, the rainbow from the airplane now from the airplane now this is uh, the ground this is airplane and this is sun let's say 
and uh, let's say this is some kind of a cloud of uh, uh, water droplets then uh, this is direction so you might see something like this so you might see the rainbow in a different direction instead of this you might see it this way or if you have sufficient amount of rainbow uh, of, of, of droplets you will see the rainbow for a full circle so sometimes you can see the full circle rainbow it all depends on where are you where is the observer etc but obviously full circle can be only from the air because if you are on the ground then horizon obviously cuts the rainbow on both sides well that's probably about it um, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture because it has more, not nicer pictures um, and uh, also uh, if there are certain uh, exams which will be attached to the whole part now this whole part actually belongs to phenomena of light um, so at the end I will probably put some exam it's not ready yet but I will put it there so I suggest you to to take exams it's very important actually to solve problems I think it's uh, you see most of the knowledge let's say about math whatever um, is in this particular course math for teens or any other course you probably don't need it in your life the purpose of this education is just to develop your mind and solving problems is actually the best tool to develop your mind because the problems you will have to solve in your life are numerous and the skill of um, analyzing the situation and producing certain solution is very important for everything else in your life so math is good as a tool in as much as you go to gym to basically um, increase your stamina, strength, and stuff, something like this. You don't really, um, I, I don't know, using the track for instance in the gym, you, you don't use exactly the same track, but you have to run sometimes. You don't lift weights uh, per se. I mean, yeah, there are some, some, some jobs where you have to lift weights, but it's not such an often thing to do but where you do lift weights just to develop your muscles so that's exactly what mass for your mind is it's what lifting weights and uh, using the track um, for your muscles that's what mass and physics are for your um, mind but physics also has another you know aspect of this it's always interesting to know things about why things do happen around us it helps Okay, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.